Puberum is that period after childbirth when the pregnancy related changes revert back to normal. Now fever during this period is called as puerperal fever defined as a temperature of more than or equal to 100.4 degree Fahrenheit. Now among the causes of puerperal fever what we are most in looking at are those related to childbirth but a number of medical infective as well as non infective causes may be responsible. Among those related to childbirth, most persistent fevers after childbirth are most often due to genital tract infections. Therefore, it is good practice to go for a complete head to toe examination so that we do not miss out on anything. Now, the breasts are often overlooked, so make sure you examine them to look for signs of breast engorgement. It usually happens in those women who are not feeding properly. Uh, the breasts are tense, tender and swollen. Condition is usually bilateral. Fever rarely exceeds more than 39 degrees Celsius and usually happens in the first few days postpartum. Sometimes because of a cracked nipple, infective agent from the infant's throat most commonly staph aureus, can gain access into the breast tissue and can cause inflammation, mastitis. It's more often unilateral with high-grade spiking fever, chills and rigor and seldom happens before the first week postpartum. Also auscultate the chest and ask for lung symptoms because of the possibility of lung infection and also because of the possibility of atelectasis which is a more likely in bedridden sick patients following cesarean section. Coming down, uh, make sure you look for signs of uterine infection, which happens because of ascending infection from the lower genital tract, begins as endometritis, can spread outwards, leading to metritis with pelvic cellulitis, what we call as puerperal sepsis. Presents with fever, chills, abdominal pain. On examination, there will be uterine tenderness or subinvolution or a foul smelling lochia. Pelvic examination will show a nexal or parametrial tenderness. In post cesarean cases, make sure you examine the stitch line for abdominal wound infections, which can be superficial or deep. Do not forget urinary tract infection. Coming down, examine the perineal area for perineal or epigeotomy wounds. Sometimes there can be a gauze piece lying inside the vagina as a source of infection. Do not forget to examine the legs for evidence of deep venous thrombosis, mostly originating in the calf veins and associated with pain, swelling, tenderness, redness of the limb. So remember, puerperal fever, go for head-to-toe examination.